Good afternoon, Miss Cindy. Hello, Bobby Joe. Hello, Linda. People are arriving. More here. Let's see. <clears throat> Hi, Carol and Cheryl. We are reaching numbers. That's good. I hope everybody's good today. I'm having a pretty good day. First full day of school at our day school today. I I'm not there the whole day, but today was their first day of school, full day, and uh, teaching 7th and 8th grade religion class, so that's my mornings, so glad to be here with you, continuing my teaching today. Uh, today we are um, we are in Genesis 45, that's what I was told to cover by Pastor Goodman, and we are thankful uh, to have Pastor Goodman being able to also uh pitch in when we need when we need help doing the bible study i hope that was a blessing for you all um, his mind map was certainly very good very appreciative for his being able to do that i'm not so fancy but we're thankful that he is very thankful good study um so he told me where to pick up but we're gonna pick up a few extra verses just so that um, i get a running start to the day it's always good to have a little warm-up. So if you all want to find the text the way you want to find the text, that would be good. I will have it up here on the screen. And we will start and now. Genesis 45, uh, verse 1. And I think Pastor Goodman covered the first three verses. He covered the big reveal. Uh, but I'm going to read that again and then we'll hit the ground running um joseph uh, was not able uh, to control himself uh, before all those uh, who stood by him and he cried out uh, make every man go out from me and no one uh with w stood with him uh when he made when joseph made was made himself known to his brothers. And he um, wept aloud. He he gave his voice to weeping, and the Egyptians heard it, and the house of Pharaoh heard it. So Joseph weeps, um, and we had Judah stand in to save his brother, um, put his life on the line uh, to redeem and ransom Benjamin back from Joseph. Um, and we see this, this kindred spirit between, after this point between Judah and Benjamin, which continues even into, um, well, the kings. So it's a long lasting relationship between those two and they, they settle near each other in the promised land. Um, they're both, they would both comprise the, the kingdom of Judah later on. Anyway, uh, Joseph, uh, says to his brothers, I'm Joseph, um, is my father alive still? Uh, but his brothers could not answer him for they were dismayed at his presence. Wouldn't you be? I mean, come on. You basically were going to, you sold the guy into slavery. You wanted him dead. Um, and suddenly he's basically the most powerful man in the world. 
the for them the known world is what I mean. Um, not a comment on other, you know, worldly powers at that time, but in in their universe, in their universe, they are suddenly standing before the second most powerful man in the world. In their universe, who has the power to do whatever he wants in that situation, he can be judge jury and executioner if he so chooses and no egyptian would bat an eye no no one not a single person all all it would take is yeah you know how i ended up as a slave it's a little piece of the story i never told you, you know that pharaoh you know what that was they all sold me into slavery and so i'm putting him in the dungeon so that would make sense for joseph to do that so they were they were slightly dismayed, uh, but um, and Joseph says to his brothers, "Please come near to me, please, please come here." And they drew near, and he said to them, "I am Joseph, your brother, the one that you uh, was sold, the, who was sold into Egypt." Uh, the so it's really funny. He's emphasizing the fact of of who did it and what what and who who sold and who was sold. So that doesn't come across in English, but anyway, um, the one you sold me uh, to Egypt. Ooh, ooh, that's not good. But now, do not be distressed. Uh, do not be um, angry in. In, upset in your own eyes um, because you sold me here because to preserve life um, God sent me before you um, and so here Joseph is emphasizing I, I, I swapped it around for God sent me before you to preserve life Joseph, when he's telling them, is actually emphasizing the preserving life part. So this is, he's come to realize the whole, the whole deal. Um, so <clears throat> for the purpose of, of, of keeping people alive, God sent me before you. So before you got here, God sent me here to keep people alive, really to keep you alive is sort of the point. Joseph gets it now. Or maybe he got it before this, but this is where he's revealing, um, he's preaching to them um, what God has done for them, uh, for their salvation, for their preserving of life through Joseph. So Joseph is preaching God's mercy to them, um, that the their Savior was, was sold into slavery. Their Savior um, was, a, was imprisoned. And so here we see Joseph being, being again, the picture of Christ. Christ is the one who was sold into, into, you know, condemned guilty for us. He became, as Paul puts it, he became sin uh, so that we would become the righteousness of God. But to preserve life, this is the whole deal. This is why God does everything, is to save and to give life. It's why he sent his, his son Jesus, why he made the promise in the beginning. But here again, just emphasizing that point, this continual point throughout the scriptures is God wants to save, God wants to forgive, God wants to give life, because that's who he is. He is a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness, and forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin. Um, that's what God does. And that's what God does for uh, Joseph's brothers, and he's using Joseph to do it, and Joseph understands this, and Joseph is preaching this to his brothers so that they're not losing their minds and are afraid. Joseph continues. Um, for uh, these two years, the famine... Uh, has been in the midst of the la of the earth, in the land, in the earth, like all over is the idea, and there are yet five years in which there will be neither plowing, uh, nor gathering, nor harvest. Um, and God 
sent me before you to uh, preserve for you. So now he's, I'm going to stop. I'm stopping mid reading the verse. Let me finish the verse first before I get so excited. I'm getting excited. Um, God sent me before you uh, to establish for you a remnant on, on the earth to keep alive for you um, a great many survivors. Okay. Yeah. So here now he's emphasize he's he emphasizes the keeping alive part at the beginning, um, and now he's emphasizing like the the time aspect. So you guys were going to be coming here anyway. Pretty much is the idea. So you were going to come here eventually, and I was sent here by God beforehand so that you would have a remnant. And, and, and this, again, is language of the church and the believers. There's always a remnant of God's people. And so here, this is the remnant of his people who trust in him. And that's who he's bringing to Egypt. Uh, okay, yes. Many survivors, okay. Um, and now... It was not you yourselves who sent me here because it was God. It was so it was not you who sent me here, but God. So, um, yeah. He has made me, fa he has established me, he, made, he has made me become father to Pharaoh. Um, and Lord, um, for all of his house and ruler in all the land of Egypt. So this is what God has done. This is how, how he did it. So he sends Joseph, and then what does he do for Joseph? He makes him father to Pharaoh. I mean, as much as Joseph is second, um, basically when it comes to the matter of the famine, Joseph's in charge completely like pharaoh's not going to touch that it's like joseph has got it right no he's not going to question him at all um pharaoh listens to him when it comes to that um so here again he's emphasizing this um he's really emphasizing now in this one so, so he repeats it three times this time he's emphasizing the fact that they were not the ones who sent him there, but it was God. That's that's how it's it's super emphatic in in the Hebrew. So and now it was not you yourselves who sent me here, because it was God who sent me. Okay, and He established me for, and so on. So now He's emphasizing you didn't send me. Right, so in three ways he preaches this this same message in in slightly three different ways, um, and, and it's all a matter of what he's emphasizing each time he does it, and it's sort of lost in the English a little bit because it just sounds all pretty close to to the same, but in the in the Hebrew the first time he's like, it's for for preserving of life, and oh by the way I was sent here before you got here, and oh by the way it really wasn't you, it was God. Um, and how does he? How did he do it? Well, I, I didn't come here as a slave. Well, I'm no longer a slave in Egypt. I'm, I'm sort of king of kings and lord of lords here. There's there's some definite Christological language right there. I'm I'm father. I'm lord. I'm ruler. Um, and this is why uh, this echoes the language of of Jesus. Um, his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. So Father there is sort of a, not meaning God the Father, but meaning um, a ruler. So here, um, Joseph really fit in the bill for a, a Christological figure. Um, sort of ruler from nothing, right? So what, what now? Um... Hmm. Okay. 
Uh, let's see here. Uh, go up to my father uh, quickly. Hurry up and go to my father and say to him, Thus says your son uh, Joseph, uh, God has made me Lord uh, of all, for all Egypt. Come down to me. Uh, do not... Uh, <laughs> Uh, do not tarry. Do not stand about. Don't, yeah, don't just stand. Don't just stand there. <laughs> Come down to me. It's a very, um, yeah, we sort of talk that way, but that's the way he's talking. Don't just stand there. Come down to me in Egypt. Um, yeah, so all, like, let's see here. It doesn't, uh, he keeps going. I can't remember. Okay, so then, then he hugs on him. But uh, hurry up and go tell tell Dad. Are they really going to get on that one? I mean, they've probably kept a pretty good secret up to this point uh, over what happened. Um, but hurry up, go tell Dad I'm alive. Um, maybe we don't want to do that. Um, that seems kind of like a, ooh, that's not going to go well. But maybe it would. Um, you have to think um, that Jacob would just, I mean, besides the fact that, you know, maybe they don't have to tell him, right? They don't necessarily have to tell him what they did. They can just say, hey, I guess Joseph wasn't dead. We thought he was dead, right? Right? But... He wants his dad there. Of course he does. Um, and Joseph's got the whole thing planned out. He doesn't just have, you know, his plan to reveal himself to his brothers. He has a plan for ongoing care for them. He has a plan for ongoing mercy, ongoing um, steadfast love to them. Um, so you will dwell... Um, in the land of Goshen, and you shall uh, be near to me, you and your children and your children's children, and your flocks, your herds, and all that is yours. Um, so, you're going to live here, because you'll be close to me. And what is he going to do? It's not just you're going to have a nice place to live and you'll be on your own. No, how how does jo how is Joseph going to use his almighty power in Egypt? Hmm. Um, I will provide for you there. For there are yet five years of famine to come, so that you and your household and all that you have do not come uh, to poverty. Yes, you become dispossessed. Um, hmm. So here, um, here we have how does Joseph use his almighty power? Because he does have all, basically full power in Egypt. All authority in Egypt has been given to me. And what does Joseph do? He um, he's going to use that almighty power to create a dwelling place uh, for his brothers, for his whole family, and then he's going to give them all that they need um, so that they don't become disenfranchised, so that they don't have, they don't lack anything. Um, he's going to shower upon them um, what they need for body and life, daily bread. So that is how um, Joseph is ruling Egypt. He's certainly caring for the Egyptians, right? Uh, we've seen that time and again, um, though we can see that, um, well, the, the Egyptians are sort of coming in more and more servitude to uh, the pharaohs. However, um, they're living, so that's good. Um, but he's really using it so that, um, that his brothers won't come into poverty, that they'll still have their possessions. They will still have what is theirs. Um, they will just be cared for. Um, and what is he? And behold, 
your eyes see and the eyes of my brother Benjamin see that it is my mouth that is speaking to you. So you can, now that he's up close, right? Up close and personal and speaking to them in Hebrew. Um, so their own language. Um, and you must tell of my, you must preach um, to my father all my glory in Egypt, my honor, um, and all that you have seen. Hurry, uh, br uh, bring my father down here. Okay. Yes, Maggie. Yeah, he is not through an interpreter at this point. Everyone else is gone. So can you could you can just imagine um, before this point he's speaking Egyptian to them, which is just they don't know Egyptian, and suddenly he says this command in Egypt, and everyone leaves, and then he starts weeping, and they're they're probably like what? I mean, be a little confused. Saying there, okay. And then he just says, Ani Yosef. Ani Yosef. And they go, huh? Come again? And then he's speaking to them in Hebrew. And he says, or he says um, well, this is the first thing he says, come near to me. It's probably what happened in the past. How do his brothers explain? Um, the text doesn't tell us, Judy. Um, We'll get there. They just sort of show up. The, the, we'll see that they show up and, and just say, hey, Joseph's alive. Um, and Judah's like, what? And we're not really told, like, maybe they don't go into any more explanation. That's that's actually an option, right? Because their original story was, um, we found this. Is it your sons? Right? So they could simply claim that we found this thing and we never knew what happened to him they could keep the lie going um they really could and joseph does not at least from what he said in the three ways that he's told his brothers um that god sent him it does not seem that joseph would spill the beans he's just not um now, cons or the option is they do come clean. They could either keep the lie going, or maybe it doesn't come up, um, or maybe it, or it does. The text doesn't tell us. We we kind of have hints either way, um, but it would be awkward. Yeah, remember that time we said Joseph was dead? Well, um, yeah, about that. Uh, we kind of sold him into slavery, and uh, now he's in charge of Egypt. Hey, it all turned out good, right, right, Pops? Yeah, that, that's awkward. Yeah, yeah, Joseph is never going to tell. Joseph is never going to tell. Um, it's very clear Joseph's intentions. His intentions are to have mercy. It's his alien work to um, to put his brothers to the test. His proper work, what he wants to do, is to have mercy and to take care of them and forgive them. And to care not just for them. Uh, um... um Sorry, I just got a, a message that a member of mine has passed away. So, I hate to cut it short, but I have to go. So, I hope you all would have mercy on me uh, with that. Um, and tomorrow, Bible study will... Um, Bible study will be picking up again at 2. Um, so... I have, Pastor Borkart will be to lead that for you. So I hope you all have a good rest of your day. Thank you.